friends, I'm Dr. Shonali Chandra, and today I would like to share with you a clinical situation or scenario dealing with bleeding in pregnancy and how we go about it. So basically, in this clinical scenario, I want to talk about placental abruption versus placenta previa. So whenever a woman comes in the pregnancy beyond 20 weeks, okay, and uh, in the second trimester or in the third trimester with bleeding per vaginum, there are two possibilities we need to rule out, mainly placental abruption versus placenta previa. Okay, so let us have a look at this clinical scenario. Now, a 25-year-old unbooked primary gravida, unbooked meaning uh, she does not have any antenatal checkup in this pregnancy, and she comes at 36 weeks of gestation to the emergency department with the complaint of excruciating abdominal pain and sudden vaginal bleeding for the past three hours. Her BP is 160 by 100 mmHg and pulse is 118 per minute. So she is uh, decompensated because she has uh, tachycardia. However, she does not have hypotension as of yet. What she has is a BP on the higher side. Uh, physical examination shows a firm, distended, and tender uterus. Now that is one clue. The first speculum examination shows altered colored dark bleeding, all right? So that is very, very important to note here, the character of the bleeding, altered colored dark bleeding from an open internal os. FHR tracing shows a baseline of 108 per minute, that is low, all right? That is bradycardia because uh, the fetal heart rate is less than 110 per minute and there is no variability, so meaning that the fetus is also a Affected, it is decompensated. So what is the differential diagnosis and how do we proceed? So our differential diagnosis is actually going to be based upon the clinical features and the examination findings. But before that, let us uh, talk about the two uh, basic differentials we're considering. One is placental abruption and the other is placenta previa. Now, what exactly is placental abruption? Now, placental abruption is premature separation of a normally situated placenta. So the placenta is in the upper segment all right, as we can see here. Uh, if we look at the left side of the figure here, we can see that the entire placenta is separated and all the blood has collected behind the placenta, right? So this kind of a bleeding behind the placenta, the bleeding actually happens from the spiral arterioles that are, you know, supplying the placenta, those spiral arterioles get torn and uh, therefore this blood collects behind the placenta. However, there is no visible bleeding as such. So this kind of a bleeding is called as concealed hemorrhage. Okay. On the other hand, on the right side, we can see that the placenta started separating from the margins and the blood is then seeping uh, from the vagina to the outside. Now, this kind of a bleeding is called as revealed hemorrhage. Normally in clinical situations, there is going to be a mixture of the two, part of it is concealed, part of it is revealed. The other important thing to note here is that this concealed hemorrhage is particularly very dangerous because um, thromboplastin from uh, this uh, part of the placenta can seep into the maternal circulation and um, lead to uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation as a potential complication of massive uh, placental abruption. Okay, now there can be very uh, various causes of this placental abruption. One uh, of the causes is that uh, blunt abdominal trauma or any other um, uh, let's say the woman has had a, a road traffic accident, okay? So what happens is uh, shearing forces are created at the placental attachment and that causes the uh, rupture of these spiral arterioles and lead to bleeding uh, underneath the placenta. The other thing is that sometimes these spiral arterioles can be uh, excessively fragile, like in cases of uh, hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, uh, smoking, uh, uh, women who smoke throughout their pregnancy, those are also particularly prone to developing this condition. 
On the other hand, what is placenta previa? Now, placenta previa is when the placenta is in the lower uterine segment, like the one shown here. Okay, it may be partially or totally covering the internal loss. In this case, it's totally covering in the internal loss. Sometimes the placenta could be low lying when the edge of the placenta is not covering the os or it is not near the os, but somewhere within two centimeters of the internal. Os. So with this basic distinction between uh, abruption and previa, let us see how they differ in their clinical presentation. So now friends, when we talk about placental abruption, very, very important is that there is going to be some of the other antecedent history, like there could be history of hypertension, or there could be history of preeclampsia, or she could give a history that she was um, uh, traveling in a rickshaw, uh, she fell down uh, on her uh, tummy and that is when the bleeding and the pain started. Or she could have had a blunt trauma of any uh, kind or she was in a road traffic accident. So antecedent history is important. Whereas in case of a placenta previa, the antecedent history would actually be unremarkable in the sense that she could say that she was probably sleeping in bed. She was doing nothing of consequence as such. She was just um, sitting on the sofa or somewhere. She was resting and uh, the bleeding started on its own. So it's basically a causeless bleeding when we talk about placenta previa. On the other hand, in cases of abruption, when the blood collects behind the placenta it initiates pain so one very important feature uh, which will uh, favor the diagnosis of placental abruption is abdominal pain whereas the bleeding of placenta previa is typically painless so causeless painless bleeding that is what we call as bleeding of placenta previa so typically painless until unless of course the woman is having labor pains in uh, abruption, the bleeding uh, character is altered color, dark vaginal bleeding uh, would go in favor of placental abruption, whereas a bright and fresh vaginal bleeding would go in uh, favor of placenta previa. And uh, like I showed you in the figure with concealed hemorrhage, you know, the bleeding might not be too evident on the outside. So shock or hemodynamic instability may be disproportionate to the amount of bleeding, especially when there is concealed hemorrhage. So this is about the clinical features of um, the two conditions and how are uh, the examination findings going to differ. So let's talk about the clinical examination findings here. And we see that in placental abruption, the uterus is going to be tense and tender. Because of this collection of blood behind the placenta, the fundal height uh, is going to be more than the period of gestation, especially if it's concealed. It might be normal if it's a revealed hemorrhage. There is going to be increased uterine tone. So sometimes uh, a woman with placental abruption could be in labor. In that case, she will have labor pains. But how will we determine this increased uterine tone? Now, what happens is, um, you know, when we place a hand on the maternal abdomen and we uh, elicit the contractions, we feel the contractions, we realize that between two contractions, there's always a period of relaxation when the uterus completely relaxes back to its normal tone. When there is increased uterine tone, the uterus will not completely relax in between contractions. And that is what is the meaning of increased uterine tone. Now, when the placenta separates, you see the link between the mother and the fetus is broken. You see, so the fetus cannot extract oxygen out of the placenta because all this blood is collected here. So varying degrees of fetal distress, fetal decompensation will usually follow in cases of placental abruption. Whereas in placenta previa, on the other hand, the uterus is uh, usually relaxed. There is a normal uterine tone. Because of the placenta lying in the lower segment, uh, the presenting part of the fetus will not be able to descend down into the pelvis. So it will lead to an unengaged presenting part. And for similar reasons, like the one shown in the figure here, the fetus is placed in a transverse lie. So malpresentations are also common in cases of placenta previa and the fetal heart rate is usually normal. Okay, so 
moving on, once we have uh, done our initial uh, history taking and initial clinical examination, we uh, have to do one thing, especially in this particular case, because she's an unbooked woman. Uh, before moving on further with the examination, we have to ensure that there is no placenta previa. So our prime concern is actually in a case which clinically looks like uh, placental abruption, our prime uh, focus is to uh, first of all stabilize the woman and then to rule out any previa. All right, and to rule out previa, we used uh, we actually have to perform an ultrasound. So ultrasound is done basically to rule out uh, previa in this clinical situation. All right, so as we can see here on the left. In case of a placental abruption, especially if it's a concealed hemorrhage, we can see this uh, collection of blood behind the placenta. This is the main placental uh, mass, and this is the collection of blood behind the placenta. So this is what we call as a retroplacental hematoma. All right. The important thing to note here is that sometimes in case of a real hemorrhage, uh, there might not be any findings of retroplacental hematoma, or sometimes the uh, the appearance of the clot is very similar to the appearance of the placenta on ultrasound. So absence of ultrasound uh, findings does not necessarily rule out the diagnosis of a placental abruption. However, uh, ultrasound is definitely diagnostic for the presence of a low-lying placenta. As you can see here, this main placental body is lying um, near the os. This is the cervix here. We can see this is the cervix here. This is the body of the cervix. This is the os and the placenta is lying here. This is the fetal part that we can recognize. All right. So once in this particular case, we have ruled out previa, then we move on to our next examination, which is PV examination. Now the woman is having pain, she is having bleeding, and we have to make a decision about our further action. So it is very, very important to proceed with a PV examination, but please remember that is done after ruling out a uh, previa. So placental abruption, we realize, is mainly a clinical diagnosis, even if the ultrasound does not show anything. All right. And what we can do uh, with the PV examination is also we can find out how much the woman is already dilated. Is she in labor? If there is a bag of membranes, then that can be ruptured. So that is called as ARM, artificial rupture of membranes, as we can see in the figure on the left here. So once we do an ARM, we can have a blood stain liker that is coming out and that can help us confirm the diagnosis and on the other hand it will also achieve uh, uh, the augmentation of labor doing ARM can uh, you know augment the uterine contractions which she's already having so it will um, augment the labor. So ARM has a dual benefit there. Now management in this particular case the woman is um, 36 weeks, the fetal maturity is there. She's beyond 34 weeks now, she's near to her term. So the management is basically termination of pregnancy. The only way her bleeding is going to subside is when the baby is delivered, when the placenta is out, and then the uterus is going to contract back. And that is what will control the bleeding. So management is termination of pregnancy. Only in certain cases when um, the fetus is away from term and doing well, and the mother is also doing well, and it is, a, uh, the, it is not near viability, would we consider a conservative approach. But in most of the situations, we would have to go forward with termination of pregnancy. Now, regarding whether to terminate via vagina, or cesarean. So basically remember that as long as the fetus and the mother is doing well and we are carrying out the resuscitation protocol, that means we are giving her IV fluids. If blood is required, we are transfusing blood. If uh, fresh frozen plasma or cryoprecipitates are required in the face of DIC, we are transfusing that. So we're taking uh, care of the resuscitation, but as long as the mother and fetus are doing well, we can insist on uh, a vaginal delivery. We can continue with that. But in this particular case, we remember that the fetal heart rate was uh, 108 per minute. 
And on top of that, there was no variability. So the fetus is not doing well. So in that particular case, I would like to prefer to go for a cesarean section. All right. So this is how we are going to approach a case of uh, vaginal bleeding um, uh, antipartum hemorrhage, where we have to differentiate between two important conditions, which are placenta abruption and placenta previa. And please remember that abruption is mainly a clinical diagnosis, and that is why the importance of understanding the clinical presentation. So friends, uh, you can also follow me on my Telegram channel. The link is provided below. And uh, you can also follow on the Facebook page. The link is also provided below. If you want to um, discuss more of clinical scenarios, please feel uh, free to offer your suggestions as to the topics that you want to be discussed. Uh, um, please feel free to comment on that. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.